Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Weekly Polls Pick of the Week. This is episode number 59. This is a podcast where Steve and, and I talk about primarily new single issue comics. Um, if you're joining us for the first time, we primarily discuss very, the, the, a bunch of different uh, styles and genres of comics that appeal to our twisted and bizarre sensibilities <laughs> as before i i yeah. thought we'd start us off with a question and um one of the things i just thought about recently is with comics where we often get one issue per month um, sometimes they come more frequently and sometimes they bec- they're even less frequently where we have big gaps like with sacrifices i think they're on a three month hiatus so my question for you is do you ever go back and reread previous issues uh, and what uh, is there any kind of criteria or rules that determine whether you decide to go back and reread something yeah, for as far as single issues go i think it's rare that I'll go back and read a sing, read single issues before the run is done. Maybe in, in the case like the sacrificers or if there's a series that's going to wrap up that I kind of lost track of what was happening and I'm excited for the finale, I'll go back and reread the first however many issues if it's not if not too many. But I do go back I do go back and read full runs, mm-hmm. but those have already been wrapped up. So it's not too often that I'll go back and read a series before it's finished. Yeah. I would say I I'm, I'm the same, but I admit I, there's a lot of instances where I'm like, I don't know if it's, you know, older age. I'm not saying I'm old, but I'm not young anymore, but uh, there are times where I'm like, what the hell just happened? (laughs) There is once in a while a synopsis and I greatly appreciate that. And I think comics should do that more often. A very basic synopsis at the mm-hmm. beginning, not necessarily, you know, all of the plot points or whatever, but I, I do think it it helps. Yeah, a synopsis is is nice, especially for an, for a series that's very complex and has a lot going on or has a lot happening or happened. I think that's really helpful to just refresh your memory because it, it's it's. Not too often you get consistent issues. A lot of the times you'll have gaps because of whatever reason. So it's nice to have a refresher. Yeah. Well, I guess we're jumping, we're continuing to jump into the DC all in. Um, I don't know which one. I think we both read absolute mm-hmm. Batman. Do you want to start us off with that one? No, let's go ahead and start us off. What are your, what are your thoughts? Yeah, um, you know, I I have to say I, I did not read um, the what was it the kind of deluxe the all in special thing. Yes, the special issue, and I've apparently it's I missed out at my comic shop, and I I was going to pick up the digital version, and I just failed uh, miserably <laughs> to do that. But what can you do? Um, I don't know if it mattered that much. Plus. You shared a very nice video uh, that helped mm. kind of summarize what the special issue tried to do. So I, I will just say I, I, I like this. Um, it's It's got a grittier tone. We have a very different take on Alfred, mm-hmm. <laughs> definitely. And I was definitely, I was really thrown at the beginning for, uh, he seems to be a very different kind of character. And that yeah. was just that was just fascinating. B- Batman as the caped crusader does not really make an entrance until halfway through, and I I, I actually appreciated that. I like hmm. the setup. I like that we're kind of coming into this world. Um, so it's it's very stylish. I it um, I, I I have a feeling so I. I, I, maybe it's not a gripe, but, um, you know, I just feel like maybe this, it's still, it's still a similar character. He's very strong and 
super muscular and just like he's huge and for for whatever reason that didn't work for me as much and i i don't know i wonder what what they're going for with that um and so just kind of his look uh was a little bit different for me um i'm not saying it's a bad thing but generally you know i i'm i'm I, I'm really interested in some of the other All In uh, uh, series as well. So I've already picked up Green Lantern mm. for next week, and uh, really curious to see now what they do with these characters because, um, you know, Batman and the backstory of uh, Bruce Wayne is quite different. Is you know. Should we say, I don't, I'll, I'll let you decide how much you want to say. I don't know. I feel like you're, well, I want people to kind of discover for themselves. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, yeah, generally overall, I was, I was pleased with this one. Yeah. So I, we, we talked last week about being excited about this series, about all in and reboots and, you know, kind of reimagining else worlds and all that kind of thing. So I'm, I'm very careful because I have, I think we all have certain expectations, certain things we would like to see in a book like this or, you know, so I, I try to, I'm trying not to get caught up in what I want to see or what I want to happen versus what actually it is they're doing. I was a little bit surprised with, with the art because not in a bad way, but the art is very manga esque has that manga feel to it. And we jump right in to the, to the story the Bruce Wayne we had, we do have him as not a the rich kid. He's someone who's you know construction worker. He looks like he's been in trouble with the law before. He's someone just a normal person, and so the 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 Batman. So Batman isn't really that different from as far as the, you know the the core of the the core of Batman is pretty much the same. We don't have a ton of variation from that. We have a little bit, little small differences. Uh, and of course, we're introduced to a lot of characters in this first issue. Batman and his suit, I thought were were pretty cool. I thought his, you know, the his cape and the way that it it it's basically a weapon. The the logo on his chest that everyone was going wild over, good and bad. Turns out that it's a weapon on its own, and I thought that was pretty neat. I was hoping for a little bit more of, of a year one type of thing where we, we see Batman from the, from the very beginning, we see him get into the, into the suit, into the kind of caped crusader role and not midway through where he's already an established hero for the most part. It seems like he's, he knows what he's doing. I I would like to see some struggle to see him start off kind of discover what he's doing. And, And I know origin stories are, We've, we've seen the Batman origin story a lot of times, so it's hard to go back to that. But again, we do also get his, his parents again. We get that whole, that whole thing. And so, yeah, I think they're, they did some good things and I, I did like the, the brutal nature of Batman that he is fighting these criminals and he's, he's going to hurt people. I mean, you can't really get around that. And he, it does get a little a little gorier than I expected, but that's a good thing. I like that they're pushing the boundaries a little bit, but not going not going too far over. So yeah, overall, I thought it was good. I think the I think we're off to a good start, and I'm excited to see where they go from here. I'm reviewing now something called Knights versus Samurai. This is from Image Comics, and the author is David Das Dalm Das Malshian. He's actually an actor, hmm. uh, and he was in the Suicide Squad and played the polka dot man. He's like a character actor. Oh, He's yeah. been in a lot of interesting like sci-fi stuff. He was in Dune. Um, I think he was also in uh, Blade Runner twenty forty nine. So, but he's also he's written other comics. So this is not his first comic. I really like the cover of this one. Um, but the interior artwork was very different hmm. from the cover, much, much rougher. Um, and I just, I don't know how to best describe that. This is a, an audio, you know, uh, platform. So, but <laughs> I think uh, for the, anybody who is listening to this, 
I'm very curious to hear your thoughts about if you've read this, how would you describe this interior artwork? Because the word rough or bold, very bold lines, almost like they're using a black marker Hmm. uh, a lot. And in some cases, uh, things are very blurred out and the artwork I don't think I, I like looked through it deeply, but it is not what you is not working for me that well. However, I did like the story. Um, hmm. We have a character who's like a, a new knight. He's a um, he's a, he's known for killing dragons, and we learn that dragons are starting to go extinct in this world. Um, and then he is sent east to assist missionaries um, who are being attacked by not dragons, but I guess demons. And then the, the story kind of shifts more to a nautical adventure. So if people that like boats and that sort of, or not so much pirates yet. Um, so I, I, I really, I was okay with the story and I thought there was even some humor that was okay. I have to mention it was only $2 and 99 cents. So maybe I'll continue with it, but the artwork is so inconsistent and, and variable that um, that's the part that's really, I'm really struggling with on this hmm. one. Can, so it sounds like a good story can overcome bad artwork. Hmm. Is that? I like to think that hmm. um, I, I don't, should I say it's bad? It is. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I'm not a, I'm not an artist. Uh, it's, hmm. I wish you could see it to judge. There's, it's just, yeah. Um, to answer your question, I think the short answer is probably, but you really have to like the story. And the story is, even the title wasn't really that exciting. I wonder if it was decided by, a, by committee, um, knights versus samurai. Like I just doesn't, it's not, very thoughtful, but Hmm. I am enjoying the story. So, and given it's only $2 and 99 cents, I think I'll give it one more shot. Yeah. I'm looking at the art now. There's a preview on the image website for the first, Mm -hmm. first few pages. It is definitely bold. Mm -hmm. Very bold. Yeah. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. Artwork is, is one of those things. It's, I wonder if it's a stylistic choice or if it's just their, style yeah. the next one for me is get fury six this is by garth ennis and jason burrows this is of course by marvel comics this is the final issue of the series and i wish it wasn't the final issue there was so there was certain storylines that it was setting up for the first five issues and it, it had a lot of strings that it was that it was kind of laying out for us throughout the five issues and some of them felt like they can go a lot longer and some of the storylines felt very rushed here at the end. Like they didn't, it doesn't feel like they had enough runway to finish off all these different, there's a couple of storylines that just felt unfinished. Like they they were wrapped up, but it was very fast and it, it was, it was done in a different way. The stories were wrapped up in a different, different way. I don't want to spoil what exactly happens, but it was very fast and it was very odd the way that some of the storylines were, were wrapped up. There was a lot of, yeah, it was strange. Um, but I think I like that it, that it fits in the Punisher timeline. It does explore what happens to our heroes when they go through certain things and how it changes them. You know, the, the sacrifices that they make to do the right thing or to, um, the mental and physical challenges and and injuries they have after. Uh, So yeah, it's not my, it's not my favorite uh, finale, but I'm always happy to return to the Ennis and Burroughs universe when I can, especially the Punisher and Fury. So um, a little bit disappointing, but still a fun six issue run. And it's nice to just, I think this is something that was mentioned years ago that they were doing together. So we finally got it, and although it does feel a little rushed, I'm still happy with it. So, would you recommend this as a 
trade paperback or uh, as a volume? I would say only if you're a fan of the Punisher Max run and the Fury Max run. I think if you're a fan of those, then yes. But if you're not familiar with those, I'd say read those first and see if, because I think it's, it, it's, it's, I think it, it, it's more enjoyable knowing where it fits in the timeline than it is to just kind of read it on its own. So I would say read those first. And if you enjoy it, then it would probably fit in the, it would, it would probably be more enjoyable. Yeah. So the next one I have is one that it's definitely not, I like how at the beginning of the show, we mentioned that newish comics is not, they're not always, you know, the <laughs> most recent because sometimes I find a book in the, in the store that's on a shelf somewhere and mm -hmm. just waiting to get read. So the next one for me is minor arcana. This is number one by Jeff Lemire's by boom studios. So Teresa, Re Teresa, our main character, I think her main character returns home after a long, uh, long hiatus, if you will, and isn't too happy about it. And she returns home to a lot of problems. I think these types of stories are fun because you can, I think we can all relate to them in some way that we, in some ways run away from problems as we get older and to go back and face those old problems that either we're running from or just don't want to deal with and face certain truths about ourselves and our history, the things that we've, we've been through. I think there's, it's, it's a great way to start a story and to explore the characters and, and to kind of unravel the story and the different layers of the personal past of each one of them and how it all fits together. And Jeff Lemire's art style is very unique. It's very, um, it, it, I think it fits well for these kind of personal stories that you can see the pain on their faces. You can see the uncomfortable, uh, you know, they're uncomfortable, the, the, whether they're uncomfortable or, or they're in thought or whatever. I think it, it, it conveys those emotions very well. I think it fits very well for these up close and personal types of stories. It, it wouldn't fit. I don't think for, for more like superheroes type of story. I think it fits very well for these. And uh, it feels like very, very up close and personal, I guess, his art style. So yeah, uh, I'll def definitely be continuing. I'm so glad to hear that. Yeah, I've read the first two. And um, I would you agree that Teresa is a flawed character? Oh, yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah, I think I all think of them are flawed, yeah. I think that's, you said that you were hooked uh, when I <laughs> mentioned that. Yeah. And I like that very much as well. And you're yeah, kind definitely. of rooting for these. It's not because, and I wanted to say like, for me, it's because I am rooting for those people to overcome mm -hmm. all these, you know, challenges that many of us are faced with. Yeah. Um, I think it makes them all relatable for sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So next up for me is, uh, a series I've been reading for a while now, and um, this is Geiger, number seven. And um, the last, the last issue was a bit of a downer for me. Uh, if you watched Breaking Bad, do you remember the Fly episode mm -hmm. where it was just about them chasing the fly? Yeah, I think that's what happened in the last one. Where which I actually think that that was fine, but in the last one, I just I don't know if it's because they ran out of time or whatever um but it was a, a pretty big departure and it was about these kind of mutant animals in a zoo so hmm. fortunately we're back to the kind of the main story here so i'm 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 pleased to see that because i i was a little bit i mean i was just a little bit put off uh so it looks like i'm, I'm back in uh, Geiger as a character in this one, it seems like he's becoming more and more nihilistic. I will say there is a visceral scene where he, so he's like this radioactive guy, I guess, and he can get, he glows and he can become extremely, you know, extremely hot or, so he kind of melts somebody. <laughs> like I said, it's a visceral scene. Um, and uh, really uh, makes you makes you think. Well, this guy maybe while he's kind of a hero, he's pretty much an anti-hero. Um, and we do see some giant insects here, which is pretty cool. Who can? I mean, I'm I'm a fan. 
And um, I used to work in an entomology lab, Steve. I don't know oh, if you nice. knew that way, way back when. <laughs> <laughs> um, one thing I will mention is we do not have, um, is it Gary Frank, the, the artist? He is not with us this time. It's a mm. new artist and I didn't notice it right away. So I guess that's a good thing. Yeah. That the artist is Paul Pelletier with the same author being Jeff Johns. Um, so because it's a return to form and, uh, we're getting more of it, we're, we're, this kind of ended with a glimpse into who is pursuing Geiger and why it looks like there is some buildup, I think for the, I don't know if the issue eight is going to be the final one. We'll see where it goes. I have a feeling it's going to go continue for a while. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'm, I'm curious. Yeah. I'm, I'm back in, like I said. Nice. Yeah. The fly episode, it's, it's definitely like that type of story that it, I forget what the, the name of that episode is the the networks have dubbed the like the low budget mm-hmm. kind of filler episode but yeah it, it's very hit and miss for sure yeah uh, the next one for me is precious metal five this is by i'm going to try not to butcher everyone's name uh, darcy van polgeist ian uh, bertham and matt hollingsworth it's by image comics now i'm image comics i'm going to be honest i don't really know what's going on. Uh, I don't really know what's happening. And on on the other hand, I, I don't really care too much. I, I, I'm still enjoying it. I think there's the artwork, the style, the, um, it, it all, the story, the visual, it all works for me. And there's something that I'm, I just feel like I'm missing something. I, this is probably one I'll have to go back and reread before the next issue, the the final issue. And maybe it's because I haven't read Little Bird. Um, I don't know. Either way, I'm still enjoying it. And maybe I'm just dumb because it's another possibility. But the artwork and the visuals will definitely leave an impression on you. And they'll really it'll really stick with you. I just wish I had a firmer grip of what's happening. But I'll give it a reread and, and hopefully it'll sink in the second time. But yeah, really, really great series. I just, I just wish I... I had a better understanding what's of what's happening. The next one for me is Sentinels. Now this is one that it just sounded interesting. I read the synopsis and it, they, I'll just be honest. They got me with the synopsis. The, the Sentinels are now in the hands of mutants or in control of mutants instead of trying to exterminate them. You know, they're now under, under their control. Uh, I didn't mind the art so much, but the dialogue just didn't, pull me in and I think some of these characters I, I just don't feel an, an attachment to I just don't I'm not familiar with them I don't know their, if their new characters are existing I always have this affinity for the Claremont X-Men run and I just haven't been I don't remember another time other than like the 90s uh, the early 90s the Jim Lee uh, Uncanny X-Men runs when I, I really felt like I was enjoying it and that was a long time ago so I, I just don't really have an attachment to any of these characters. I don't really have an attachment to the world anymore. And I think it's a fun idea. I just, I couldn't get into it. So I won't be continuing this one. Um, I did a quick uh, search online. Uh, are the Sentinels mutant hunting robots or is this yeah. something totally different? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But the mutants not control them and mm. they do some, some, cool things. Um, I think they did some interesting things. I just, like I said, I I just don't, I feel like we get into these, these new series, these new number ones with the, with the kind of like just with the understanding that, you know, or you're familiar with what's going on or what else is happening in the X universe. And I I don't know. So it's hard for me to, to really get attached and to really sink my teeth, sink my teeth into it. So I just, yeah, but I tried. Yeah, I think I think with DC and Marvel, it, when it's a number one, it's like it might be a new. It's a character that's maybe not had, not been in the limelight, but it's they've lived a long life of continuity in, yeah. in a lot of cases. I actually thought though, with um, Neil before Zod, we didn't get too much of that. I I thought 
it kind of stood alone pretty well. Yeah. I think he did a really good job. At it. And, and they didn't really start integrating the rest of the DC universe in until later. And even when they did, it wasn't very much of it. It was just a little bit. So I appreciated that. But we need more of that. And but the sad thing is, Neil before Zod didn't survive its run. So, yeah, yeah it is what it is. Yeah, we were we were bummed. Um, yeah. So uh, next, I I have huge detective number two. This one actually did come out a few weeks ago. Um, I, I can't remember if number one was my pick of the week, but I I I really enjoying what they're doing here. Um, huge is a type of being. It's not just large. Mm. It's a, there, if you use the word giant, I learned that that's considered a slur in this world. So there, there are these beings that came from the bowels of the earth and just showed up and, um, uh, you know, they're, I think I explained it in a, from issue number one, but there is a lot of really, I think fascinating world building here. And um, so I, I, I feel that this is a case where I felt like I, I almost needed to go back and reread number one. Um, but it just has some really fun vibes where you have like these huge beings and you're not, I think, I think we have like an inner space situation here in this one. That's the movie with Martin Short. I think mm-hmm. it came out in the eighties where, um, uh, you know, there's like these tiny, th- these tiny, uh, these people are shrunk down and they're inside Martin Short's body. In this case, the huge, <laughs> there are these seem to be people that are either on top of or inside the, the huge character who is, who is the, de- um, the, the, de- the detective in this case. Some really uh, beautiful coloring uh, here, um, and what the, what what they're doing that is I don't I've not seen very much is they throw you off with perspectives. With one panel will be you don't realize it, but if a huge is in one of these huge beings, I don't know how to describe it any better. Uh, he may be taking like the size of a skyscraper, and then they might z- zoom in on the regular humans that are so tiny. And so the perspectives throw you off quite a bit. Mm-hmm. Um, and I just, and sometimes you're not sure who's speaking, but it's just, uh, it's very different. I do feel a little bit confused due to these perspective differences, but that's not necessarily a bad thing because it's different and, and new. And I hope to, yeah, I hope to get, I think I'm, I think I'm getting used to it. So. Hmm. Sounds, yeah, I like that you mentioned inner space. <laughs> it's a, oh, I'm glad you knew that yeah, one. Eighties <laughs> classic. Yeah. It's good stuff. I mean, it was when I watched it when I was like 10 or whatever, but who knows what it is now. It's any good now. I was probably, I don't know how old it was. Yeah. Anyway, it was a long time ago, but it was fun. Yeah. I think uh, Dennis Quaid is the astronaut or whatever that gets shrunk down. And then they accidentally inject Martin Short, who's like, hey, yeah, yeah. Um, I think he's, you know, he's uh, he's got all these phobias or whatever. Yeah, that was a good one. It was a fun movie, <laughs> but who knows if it'll stand up now? Yeah, hearing you describe that sounds kind of interesting. I'll have to check that one out. Hmm. So the next one for me is one that I didn't know much about. It's called The Autumn Project. This is number one, but it's written by Colin Bunn and art by Christopher Mitten. This is by Oni Press. So the story in a nutshell is about a family who the dad is a fantasy author and he's crafting this fantasy world. And this family is going on vacation and the the world that the father created finds its way into our world in a nutshell. This is one of those books when I do wonder is that there's something else happening. There's something else going on that this isn't real. The kids are imagining it, or maybe he's writing the story. Maybe this is him writing the rest of the story. And this not this other world. It really isn't invading ours. It's a way for him to finish his series. I don't, there's, it feels like there's something else happening here. There's a deeper 
something else is happening. Um, it, it does, it does feel a little YA. I think it probably sounds a little YA. And I always laugh at the whole, you know, successful fantasy author thing. Cause there's very, there's very few of those really when you, when you think about it, but either way, the, uh, yeah, it, it's, it was okay. I, I think if, if it's a slow week, maybe I'll try the second issue, but probably, probably not just if, if I run across it, it's, but otherwise I'll probably skip the, the second one. Uh, the autumn project. Yeah. Number one. Yeah. Okay. Um, so now it comes my pick of the week and this is, uh, must, it, this must say something about us because you had this same pick of the week last week. I'm just a little bit behind you. Um, and that's Skin Police, which is also by uh, Ani Press. Mm. And for me, this uh, one wins the award as having the one, probably one of the more disgusting covers I've seen in a while. <laughs> I don't know if you had the same one, but it's like the we have the, um, what's the m- main character's name? Uh, Brisson Eckes? Doesn't yeah the name doesn't roll off the tongue, but he's on the cover and he shoots a hole through this like <laughs> yeah. flesh. So you're like well, okay, <laughs> but um, I just love uh, some of the use of language here, like because this is I think 150 years in the future, and I think as you describe, you know, uh, there's been issues with fertility, and so people are. Um, doing cloning and and there's kind of various laws and challenges, but people that are, are that clone that are cloned they may go mad and they and the the word they use is pop they might pop mm. <laughs> and I just like I just love that I don't know uh, something about about um, you know I think being careful and picking you know some of these terms that just just work for whatever reason. So just some really original stuff, uh, very, very pleasing artwork apart from the cover, but I'm okay with it. Um, I was a little bit surprised with the ending, but I think we've discussed this many times. Comics is issue number ones. They try to wrap things up a lot in the first issue. It's just to me that the ending was a little bit kind of like, okay, let's try to wrap this up or whatever, but just a great, um, really great start. And yeah, I added this to my kind of auto, uh, you know, my, my pull list. So oh, nice. pretty cool. Yeah. I'm glad you enjoyed it. it. It's definitely has a, a very, yeah, I don't know. It, there's so many things going on there that, um, just a really interesting premise. And I, I like the, 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 the fact that anyone can be, one of these people that will pop. And this uh, character, uh, Cap uh, Brisson, he works for the duplicate identification and capture division. Mm. So like, like they like just thinking through all of these things uh, really helps make you feel like it's a, um, an immersive world. Yeah. Yeah. The, yeah. And you, if you if you were in that world, you would probably be wondering if if you are one of these people too. You just don't know it yet. Exactly. That's what's interesting. Is yeah, none of the you you could be you could pop. Yeah. Any day. There's also a lot of corruption going on here too. Like he's not such a good guy. Like you, I don't yeah. really feel like he's, you know, you're you, like he's like, well, I'm just doing my job, and yeah, sometimes things don't work out, so. If, it, if, you know, if we kill a few people, I mean, just also like, just, uh, just really well done. A lot of layers. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Before I move on, I want to thank you for, for Matt, you asked me in the chat here on a recording. It is the autumn kingdom. I'm not sure why I wrote down autumn project. So okay. yes, the autumn kingdom is a book I was talking about a second ago. So yeah, that was, I don't know why I wrote down project, but that's okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so the my pick of the week this week was one that surprised me a little bit. I'm not a huge fan of these kind of franchise offshoots or these, you know, like the the existing franchises. They they get a, a comic book run, 
especially something like Terminator, because I think the franchise is tired and needs a break. Go to bed, you're drunk kind of thing. And so I was surprised because Terminator 1, this is by Declan, Declan Shelby and Luke Sparrow uh, and Colin Croker, I believe, by Dynamite. And this book, it's we're basically exploring time and not so much the Terminator about the ine- inevitability of time, the, ine- the inevitability of death of everyone's life ending. And when does, no matter what we do to outrun it or to hide from it, it's creeping closer and closer every day. And it's really not about the Terminator. It's really just about life and death and, yeah, all those all those really awesome things that none of us like to think about. So the artwork was fine. I wasn't blown away with the art, but it's basically a story about a couple who was being chased by the Terminator and just like we're all being chased by time. So I thought it was really great. I, I thought it was a fun a fun like I like how they how they use the Terminator to kind of depict time and that just that creeping the creeping inevitability i keep saying inevitability but yeah so yeah it, i thought it was really really great book so terminator one my pick of the week wow um you know what's interesting i think we read i, I read um a few like an it was like a series an alien series i believe and i think oh, yeah. also read one or two but that was marvel and mm-hmm. so for some reason, I thought this was going to be Marvel, but it's Dynamite. So I wonder. I don't want to, you know, I don't want to say anything about Disney or whatever. But um, I think, um, yeah, maybe they have more license to do more creative things with Dynamite. I don't know with this franchise. Yeah, I mean, I don't know the inner workings of Marvel yeah. and Dynamite, but I would assume that the creators have a little bit more control over the stories that are being told at dynamite than Marvel because Marvel is Disney and Disney owns the alien franchise now. So I, I would imagine that there's very strict guidelines of what you can and can't do the characters you can and can't use the the events you can and can't mention. So yeah, I, but I really, I really love the way that they explored the, the, it's a Terminator story, but it's really not a Terminator story. And I, I wish they would do something like that with the Alien franchise, but they're very, very straightforward and very, yeah, it, it feels very boring because it's the same story over and over again. But I was really impressed with this one. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. So that is number 59. Well, we're rolling <laughs> along. Getting closer and closer. So, yeah, thanks everyone for hanging out with us and listening to us, and looking forward to all in. See what other titles are are coming uh, this week, and hopefully I'll write the right titles down next week instead of miss misspeaking. Okay. Yeah, if you'd like to get in touch with us, check out pagestream.com, visit our forums, register there if you aren't already. Come and tell us how wrong we are, and and whatever it is we said, or tell me how much of an idiot I am for not understanding precious precious metal five the way that it probably should, but yeah. So hope everyone has a great week. Let us know what you're reading. There's also a, a button or a link down below in the description to send us a message. If you'd like to send us a message that way, please feel free and say hello. So until next time, we will talk to everyone very soon. Bye-bye. <laughs>